Senators, please take your seats. We'll be beginning momentarily. Can you hear me? No. 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 I know. Dang. I was really hoping to win for the whole meeting. That's okay. Uh, look at the chicken. Everybody laugh. Perfect. That's all I wanted to get out of it. All right. You're right there for the rest of the meeting. So, we are now going to begin with roll call. Senator Thompson. Senator Erickson. Here. Senator Moy. Here. Senator Ramsey. Here. Senator Schmidt. Here. Senator Anadiji. Here. Senator Owusu. Here. Senator Andrade Lara. Here. Senator Kronk. Here. Senator Landis. Proxy. Senator Nowinski. Here. Senator O'Brighty. Here. Senator Sowal. Here. Senator Okaro. Here. Senator Christensen. Senator Akintan. Senator Chaiti. Here. Senator Sajal. Here. Senator Balami. Here. Senator Garten. Here. Senator Sampson. Here. Senator Moeen. Senator Mitchell. Here. Senator Rod. Here. Senator Zelmer. Here. Senator Hoysa. Here. Senator Robach. Here. Senator Albright. Here. Senator Redinez. Here. Did I say that right? Redinez. Redinez. Yeah. Okay, perfect. President Cronin, yeah. Vice President Logan Falami. All right, so the first thing we have on our agenda for the day is a presentation from Maverick Adventure. <laughs> All right, folks, I think is the mic on, you can hear it. Yep. We'll stand kind of up here. I am a wanderer, but I have a great projecting voice that I will use. Uh, my name is Sam Steiger. I'm the program coordinator in the Office of Campus Recreation. I run uh, the Adventure Education Program and Climbing Walls out of Campus Rec. I'm Elliot Floyd. I'm Sam VA and Maverick Adventures, and I work with him in the Department of Campus Recreation as well. So today we're here to talk about um, the, the concept of Maverick Adventures. Zooming over in a huge overview, I'm going to tell you that we want to give you a quick historical update. We want to talk to you about current things going on and report back to you on what this year has yielded out of Maverick Adventures. And then we also are going to hint and push our vision towards the future. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff. I have chosen not to give any handouts to you all. However, moments after this presentation, you'll be receiving an email that has hyperlinks to more documents than most of you will want to read. But it has data, it has surveys, it has presentations, including a copy of this presentation, it has videos, it has almost everything you can imagine. So let's talk a little bit about what we're talking about when we use the words Maverick Adventures. In the 1980s, through the 70s and 80s, operated out of the Centennial Student Union here in this building, there was an outdoor rental center and a trip and travel program. It was not called Maverick Adventures at the time. I believe it just had the rental center or the outdoor center as a title. And later on, maybe a picture of it is going to actually come up on the screen. This 80s, in the mid 80s, this program was dissolved. It simply was that someone left the position and from what I've heard and from what I've been able to find in university archives, just the decision was made not to rehire that position, and things just kind of fizzled up. In August of 2011, my position used to be within the College of Education, but things happened with a huge budget cut at our university where 80 plus professors were laid off. I was one of those professors that received a pay slip, and we actually made the decision as a student body, the Senate really did a big push to take the Adventure Education Program and move it over to the Office of Campus Recreation where I reported to Todd Pinkston. And we were able to use our existing leadership uh, development programming, high ropes course, challenge course, team building, but then we also added in rock climbing. So there was an outdoor climbing wall that was refurbished in 2011, and there was an indoor climbing wall that was added through major work of this body, the student government, to bring indoor rock climbing to the students as you know, that's quite popular and it's been very successful. In 2014, late 2014, 
a um, graduate class approached us for doing some research in regards to what students want to see out of campus recreation as a whole. So they were talking about all of campus recreation. This survey was really neat. It came out with 800 plus respondents, which an MSU survey typically does not come back with 800 plus respondents. It also talked a lot about the deficiencies in campus rec, primarily weight space, weight room space, also outdoor programming desires, and then some other issues of cleanliness and things like that. There's a hyperlink in your upcoming materials that you can look through some of that. In 2015, we actually started talking about the concept of Maverick Adventures with our Senate. So it began back then, a long time ago. In 2016, we asked for funding, and we actually asked for the entire program to be funded at a, a rate of over $250,000. The result was just one GA position funded, $16,000, and that person was reporting uh, to, to me to work on furthering the conversation of Maverick Adventures. There was no money allocated for programming or options. The next year we asked for the GA position and we asked for some funding, but we did not receive the funding for programs. Some of you know Joe Wolf. This is the year that Joe Wolf worked with us. Joe also did some pilot programs, but he did that out of creative programming at low or no cost using other sources of funding, not MSSA, or student fee funds. Athletic and Campus Rec Programming and Space Needs Task Force was assembled in the last year. That was a task force that David Jones and the president kind of directed, Todd Fakeson, myself, uh, Rick Straka, uh, Kevin Weisman, a number of people, a number of students. Abdul was in here, he just walked out. Um, and uh, Mimi also was, uh, uh, President uh, Cronin was also part of that task force in the later stages. And a big concept and talking point of that task force was this Maverick Adventures concept. Lastly then, in April of last year, we talked to Senate and asked for funding um, for some programming and for our GA, and we received that. You're gonna hear about our outdoor programs that we offered in just a minute. Here's some foreshadowing, but this April is coming around again, and we're scratching our heads right now, wondering what we're gonna do when it comes to the future of Maverick Adventures. As you'll notice on the board, this is a map that represents uh, university outdoor programs um, throughout our region that are at schools that are both smaller, larger, and roughly our size. A big factor in a lot of universities is retention and also recruitment. If we could push Maverick Adventures and hopefully get the program going, hopefully that's something we can call on in the future to be able to keep students and to uh, recruit and gain more students throughout the years um, as we continue on. We have a list of about 30 universities around us. So a lot of people say, what's looking at, at what's pushing this? Uh, the student body really is a big voice in it. I know that I, I have a large voice when it comes to it. It's something I'm very passionate about um, throughout my years, also throughout my undergraduate um, years. I love John's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so I told you about the Armantrout study that Professor Armantrout had 803 respondents. Also, a few of us at the university, Dr. Sarah Boris, uh, Dr. Fuller, David Childers, myself, and then a student, Madeline DuBois, got a grant to do some research in 2016. Our research yielded 525 respondents. Again, I challenge you to find other surveys at the university that are yielding that uh, number of respondents. It's tough. This is a popular topic. So we're talking a little bit about out outdoor stuff. I want Elliot to fill you out in on what we've done this year. So to date, we've done three pilot programs. We've done a bike ride in which we took 26 participants to the Rapidan Dam Cafe in Rapidan, Minnesota, and had some pie. Um, on October the 19th, we did a hiking pilot program to Minneapolis State Park in which naturalist Scott Cadelka actually joined us. He's a naturalist for this region and all of the state parks, and he helped uh, do the hike with us and gave us a lot of great information. 
about, and we fed them all. Yes. <laughs> so for the spring semester, I've been working with Sam and trying to become as creative as I possibly can with what we have. I'm looking at potentially doing snowshoeing and snowga as two separate events because I know that sometimes they attract uh, different crowds of folks. In addition to that, I'd like to get out to some other state parks, perhaps for longer, because our other pilot program at Minneapolis was a bit short. Hopefully we get people out for longer and have a longer hike and be able to do more maybe at Minneapolis and other state parks. And lastly, we had a very successful caving trip last year, and we're hoping to do that yet again this year as well. Presentation time is super valuable, but check this out. This is from yesterday. Credit to Ben Nelson in our office, who's just been killing it with videography and stuff lately. We've been doing a lot of stuff on social media, and he's doing awesome. So let's talk a little bit about small wins. I'm a Packer fan, but I wanted to give some credit. Minnesota Vikings donated 20 bikes to us. Let's say it's a, it's a cost of $6,000. That's pretty awesome. We have 20 Trek mountain bikes on campus. That $6,000 is something that we didn't have to ask the students for. We have great bikes, and they're here. We needed a storage system for the bikes, and we had um, someone who believed in our programming and a, and a, a colleague of ours at, at the university. Todd and I are very creative with finding funders, funding sources, but we were actually able to find $18,000 to buy a storage system for the bikes. Again, no cost to you all. Another vendor, do you mind if I say it? The green transportation fee was part of it. Not $18,000. It was $1,800. Is what it was. Did I say thousand? Yeah. Yep. Eighteen hundred fifty-five. But the green transportation fee, I was I was purposely not mentioning the, the person who contributed. But bike tune-ups were another thing that we couldn't afford. We didn't have the money for it, but we found another area on campus that believes in this and was able to give us that eight hundred dollar uh, tune-up uh, charge as well. We ended up having to buy bicycle helmets, and I was able to do that out of my own funding sources in the Adventure Education Program. But to be responsible, renting bikes, we need helmets for safety. Uh, recently, I also have been approached that we will have approximately five ice augers donated. Those are $400 each in cost. We could do some ice fishing programming, potentially. And then also, we have recently secured about 25 hammocks to the tune of about $1,000. The reason that I really like this, guys, is that that's $12,000 worth of gear that we've been able to get and use, and all of that is just out of creative funding. I really credit Todd for doing the work, also Elliot and prior GAs, uh, to finding creative ways for us to get more stuff for students around here. These small wins are kind of what we're talking about, because we're limited. With limited amounts of money, we need to make these small wins. I want to tell you just a little bit about this big picture of Maverick Adventures. This is what we've always talked about. A rental center on campus. This is a picture of the old rental center in the student union, but a place to come get a solar panel to charge your devices, beanbag sets, coolers, kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, sleeping bags, tents, any outdoor equipment that you can think of. Trip and travel programs. 
the ability to go backpacking with a group. Maybe it's rock climbing, maybe it's kayaking. There's all different levels of trip and travel stuff. Some of them are specific to certain sports or, or wilderness adventures. Some of them might be just a weekend wilderness retreat with yoga with our own Carly Hopper. Some of them you need some expert guiding. And so that's where our staff and students and our professional staff would come in to give you the safety equipment as well as the instruction that you need. Lastly, clinics and certifications kind of juice the whole program up because they teach people how to use the equipment and how to do the things we're trying to do. Most outdoor university programs that we just showed you on that map are doing all three of these goals. Here's some pictures of different pursuits as well as clinics. Maybe it's first aid, maybe it's a certification in outdoor climbing, or there's a certification in paddling or uh, even leave no trace, which is ways to make minimal impacts on the environment. Staffing is something we've always talked about. Part of our plan was calling for two additional full-time positions to redistribute the work that we're doing in the adventure and challenge as well as the outdoor realm. Also graduate assistant positions are, in, are needed. And then lastly, if there's a rental center, we need to have it staffed on an hourly basis when students are available. And we also would be interested in trip staff, people that are leading and guiding these positions. And of course, all of that stuff takes space. We've had numerous conversations about space on campus. We wanted to take over some classrooms. That's not an option because we need classroom space at MSU. Uh, there isn't current space that is unoccupied and ready. So then we've been in talks about where else could we go. This is a big question mark. But right now, Todd and myself have been working with this uh, ad hoc, or this, uh, not the ad hoc committee, but the task force that was formed on athletic and programming space needs. And we really think that building out a rec center to have a bigger weight room, potentially a bouldering area, and an outdoor program is probably our best bet at finding space for the current future. But that stuff takes money. Last thing here is cost. How much does it all cost? Well, building out is super expensive, so let's not talk about that number right now. About $70,000 worth of gear. Maybe we don't ask the students for it. Maybe we find creative ways to find the rest of here. There's institutional equipment funding that maybe could be looked at. There's strategic priority funding that maybe could be looked at. If the gear is being used for academic purposes, that also could be great. It just crosses things off a little bit. Lastly, there would be annual operations that are needed to run this kind of a program. And right now there's a budget with an estimation. And I have not spent a lot of time on this budget because we have not asked, actually asked for this money for the past two years. Uh, but it's something that I have been continually putting some energy into so that when we need it, we have a good dialed-in budget. We call this the weave. Academics, weaving with recreation, lastly, bringing adventure, challenge, and fun. There's a sweet spot in this Venn diagram, and this sweet spot's really, really important because we're trying to find it, and we're trying to make sure we have partnerships across the university. We've talked to a lot of professors, faculty, and staff some of which are listed on the on this slide here. Also, I have a list of their quotes in long form that will be attached to your email. And they're talking about how that stuff, sorry, it went really quick. Anyways, they're talking about how that stuff would complement their learning in the classroom, also making uh, more opportunities for students outside the classroom. I gotta wait for it to go now because I went too fast. This is our last slide, y'all. Our team are really excited, really passionate. We really want to get people outside. The pilot programs that you all funded last year have been very, very successful, and we give each other high fives on a daily basis. I'm flabbergasted that 107 people came outside last night or yesterday and ate hot, cooked over the fire, cooked over stove, stove food. Some of you all were there. I thank the people that showed. Uh, Natalie, where she's in, right in front of me. Erica showed up. Uh, I don't had anyone else? Sorry if I missed you. But um, it's, it's absolutely wonderful for you guys to be supportive of these programs. And Elliot and I, on a daily basis, really enjoy taking kids outside trying to mold these into university experiences. There's two more little short videos that highlight our pilot programs from this year, but they're linked in the video or the email that I'm sending to you. And I encourage you to see them. We just didn't have time to play them today. We stand for questions. Floor is open for questions. Seeing none, thank you for your presentation.
presentation. I forgot to credit Todd Finkston and the rest of the Office of Campus Rec staff, but our pro staff and our other GAs also are quite involved, so I'm thankful for their assistance as well. We will now move into open forum. Do we have any speakers for open forum? Yes. Stand to be recognized. Um, hello. Hi. It's me again. I'm Bill Z, the president of the Free Law Society. So we came in with, uh, we came to tell you guys last week about an event that we're hosting. We've officially um, kind of confirmed the location and the time. So the location will be in Ostrander at 4.30 to 6 p.m. And it will be, in, yes, in Ostrander at 4.36 p.m. And we're hosting our legal career panel. And we know you guys wanted a flyer. And we'll be done today. Not now, but it'll be done soon. Um, and so we've actually confirmed our seventh panelist that we'll be having. Um, so we'll be Way to Bed, Vice President, uh, Trust and Counsel at Perfidium, Nick Prince, um, State Senator, George Sewell, who's a judge of uh, firm partner, and a trustee, Representative from Kennedy Kennedy, which will be Chris Kennedy, so he's actually a partner there as well. Randy Knudsen is also a partner at Knudsen KC, and Casey Harden, who's a criminal prosecutor with the Fuller County Attorney's Office, and Angelique Eagle, who's a visiting law professor at Mitchell Hamlin School of Law. So we have a very diverse panel with kind of the uh, different legal industries represented, um, and I've talked to a couple professors, and they're actually making the event extra credit for their students, so I implore your speaker to make it office hours for their senators. So that's up to Nathan, though. That's up to him to decide if you get office hours for coming or not. Um, I encourage you to let your constituents know it's a great event that we're having. We're inviting people to the community, and we're extending invitations to faculty as well as staff. Um, so help us make this a great event.
certificate of participation, if you need some documentation for the training center, but you put it on uh, your records that you turn in and submit to them. And uh, they assured me that if you already had your contribution hours for this year, that you could apply it to the credit, your cutoff date for submitting your hours. So she said that it would count for next year if you already have this year's coverage. Any further questions? speakers for open forum. Right, seeing none, we will now move into the approval of the consent agenda. Is there any dissent to approving the consent agenda? Seeing none, the agenda has been approved. We will now move into officer reports, starting with President Cronin. Um, first of all, happy Halloween. Super spooky as a treat. Allison and I baked cookies for everyone. Um, so I'll pass this around if you want to take one. They are made with love. And there should be more than enough for everyone and for those in the gallery. Made with love and screams. <laughs> um, uh, thank you to everyone who helped with the Senate Haunted House. Um, if you went through the Haunted House, student governments, or was it? CSU Haunted House. Student Governance Room was this one, so if you went through and saw the scary nuns, that was us. Uh -huh. yeah. So thank you to those who helped. Make sure to count that as your office hours, those five long hours of screaming at students. Good times. Um, next, uh, RHA President Andrew Trenny dropped this off. So Sydney Janney, the Director of Res Life, who was here last week and will be here next week, I believe, um, invited any senators interested to attend a um, presentation about the budget for the rest halls. So if you want to learn more about that and um, what exactly RHA has proposed this year, definitely sign up for more information on when to attend. It looks like the present, there's two different presentation times on November 9th, either from 11 a.m. to noon or 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So if you're interested in that, make sure to write your name down. Um, tonight is the last night to register for Students United for the delegation um, conference. So if you know that you are confirmed with Caitlin to be attending, make sure that you follow the link that was sent and register so that way uh, Students United can make sure to have the appropriate number of rooms accounted for for students staying. Um, it is in Moorhead this year, so you'll hear more information from um, myself and Vice President Ogunquami regarding travel <coughs> and the stay and what expect what to expect at delegates. Next, um, there's currently a search occurring right now for the Dean of Social Behavioral Sciences. There is one student appointment needed to that search committee, so if any of you are interested in that, especially if you are a student within the College of Social Behavioral Sciences and you would like to learn more about like what the search would consist of, definitely reach out to me because we are needing an appointment for that search committee. Um, speaking of committees, I know you're all serving on year two required, but there are still a lot of openings for committees and committees that um, would be more than happy to have more students serving on them. So if you are interested in serving on more than two, or if there's another one that you're really um, passionate about the work that's done in it, definitely reach out to me because you can never serve on too many committees. Um, yeah. Questions for President Cronin? See none, thank you for your report and for your cookies. <laughs> Vice President Ogun Fahami couldn't be with us today. She is home sick. That being said, we will move right into my report. Don't have much to report on other than, um, first off, happy Halloween. Dress up. I've seen a couple of you. I like it. I do have something that was given to me from uh, Amber. It's our student government versus student affairs kickball challenge, which will be going on on uh, November 14th during our meeting. That'll be one of our short meetings. This is a sign up sheet for that. I'm going to pass that around. Please sign up if you plan on being there. I expect to see everyone's signatures. We need all the help we can get. Um, trivia was a really close thing. We're looking Otherwise,
Uh, so for academic affairs, uh, we've got a tentative uh, joint meeting for November 7th uh, with student affairs. We're kind of trying to have a little less formal than this meeting is, but do a lot of the issues that kind of intersect between student affairs and academic affairs, um, such as food insecurity, which Senator Landis um, has been working on a lot, trying to get something scheduled with that. Um, We've had a couple of dean meetings that should have happened. We're going to have to talk about those tonight. I haven't uh, gotten a chance to hear what has happened, but we've been doing the monthly dean meetings to try to stay in touch with what's happening in all of our respective colleges. Um, what is it? I think that's it. That's all that's going on right now. I'll have more for you the next cycle of going through. Not a whole lot to talk about this time, but stand for questions. Floor is open for questions. Seeing none, thank you for your report. <laughs> Next is Senator Hoysett. Hi, everyone. So with the Senator reports being like two semesters, they're kind of close together, so I did speak like at the beginning of this month, but I just wanted to follow up with some things that the residential life centers have been up to. So since I saw with you on the fall, I did meet with the full President's Commission for the Status of Women, which was a really cool opportunity to be in a room with a whole bunch of amazing women leaders on campus talking about the issues that were relevant to that, so that's been going really well. And then last Friday, three of the residential life senators, we met with Director Cindy Janning of Residential Life just to kind of start the dialogue between us as residential life centers and her being the director of residential life. So we talked about gender neutral housing, security cameras, light at the stadium heights, and then other issues that we've personally experienced and just wanted to bring up and like see how they were going in residential life. Uh, we learned a lot about the process of each issue and like what has to be done for those things to get through. So if you're interested or concerned about any of those, I would love to talk to with you about any of them. But basically, the most important thing for me coming out of that meeting was saying, how can I help you as a student senator in residential life, you know, make your job better and make the residential halls better? And she mentioned to us that the best thing that we could do was just to keep her in the know about things that are happening in the residential halls and what it's like to live in the residential halls. She hasn't lived in a res hall for a long time. She is not a 19-year-old, 18-year-old college student who typically inhabits the residential hall. So what we can do is bring up those concerns that we see on the face-to-face -face every day. So I encourage any of you who live in residential halls, if you or you know people who live in residential halls, who complain about something that they hate. The lights never turn out in the hallway for quiet hours. Uh, something smells funky. Things like that that you wouldn't think about being a problem. To just email Cindy. She's really open to those. She might not respond, but she definitely will read them and bring them to the appropriate people who need to be aware and concerned about those issues. So that's all I have for you. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate it. Questions for Senator Hoysett? Thank you. Thank you. Senator O'Caro is next. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as a senator for the social and behavioral sciences, um, Firstly, I'd like to say a big thank you to Senator Christensen and also Senator Kronk um, for being able to speak with the dean, to have him together with one night to meet with me so we could talk about what issues we in our college. Um, as the um, Senator for Social and Behavioral Sciences, I have been able to work um, in several settings that aid me to help serve my constituencies by attending meetings and also events that have been planned. Um, by the college. Um, also, I was able to meet with the advising um, department for the social and behavioral sciences 
Um, we talked about how um, we could better the advising for the program and also um, have like a survey where we could have students give us feedback on what they would like to um, have as changes for the advising for the programs. Um, and also, we also talked about um, having organizations um, work together to support themselves for like events that might go on within the college. Um, and also how we could also have um, meetings where we could talk to the different presidents um, for these organizations to know what their plans are, what the goals are, and how the college could better help and serve them. Um, I also was able to schedule an appointment to meet with the dean to talk about some of the issues and also some of the changes we'd like to see between the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Um, and I was also able to attend the scholarship dinner um, where I was able to meet with some of the faculty, staff, and also um, the dean um, just to have a brief introduction of who I was and what my plans are for the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Um, we did also talk about um, being able to promote more of the events for the different organizations um, within the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences either through um, having more flyers or sending out emails to the students um, so they could get more information about what is going on within the college. Um, so this, has, this is basically all I've been working on, and I hope to work on more to give more information and report um, on my next seminar. So with this, I will just start with questions. Questions for Senator O'Caro. Senator Hoysa. So what were some of the issues you talked about with your So I haven't I only had like a brief introduction, just letting him know how to say the different social behavior sciences and schedule an appointment to meet with him on the this of um, November so we could talk more about all the issues. Myself and Senator Kristen. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you for your report.
better location for that printer and update that printer as well. So as far as um, service goes, when printers break down and we need to get help, um, <coughs> like Leanna already mentioned, we are retraining the student workers so that they know how to actually fix the printers when problems arise. There has also been a new student worker who has been hired, so that's one more person, um, and they are, that student worker I believe is allocated to basically just going around campus and checking printers, making sure that they're working, make, making sure paper is loaded um, in the proper trays. Um, so hopefully we have less issues with printers not working, having another person, person's eyes check those printers. Um, the library paper is also being refilled nightly. And then um, something that Leanna mentioned when she ran for Senate was that a lot of the printers, even if they do have signs to help you, they are worn off, um, bending over, and they're really hard to read. So all of the signs have been updated. There is now common signage for all of the printers. So I'm going to show you guys um, a few of those signs and what they look like. So first we have the self-help, um, and it's just the middle, so it's just a reprint there of the same thing. But this is telling you exactly what you can do as a student if you're experiencing any printer issues. So checking the control panel um, and changing settings on the printer. Some of the tray instructions. So this includes two different printers, the old tan colored one, and then also the new gray colored ones. So um, you're able to fix both of those if for some reason that either of them aren't working. And then um, the printer stickers, so this will be on every single printer. So if the printer is jammed or it's out of paper or toner, you can contact the copy shop. There's a direct number on there. Um, IT solutions number is on there. And that way, when there is issues, um, people don't, um, go to that printer thinking that it's working when there's no signage on it. So now, once we can figure out what printers are out of order, they will be, uh, this sign will be placed on there and it will notify or let you know that service is on their way and where the nearest printers are so that you don't have to go out of your way finding another printer. Okay, so this next slide, um, we're all seeing this for the very first time. It's going to go live tomorrow morning. So you guys are getting a sneak preview of the new Map Prep Mobile. So a couple of things to highlight on here that we're pretty excited about. As you'll see on the bottom, those links, those are links that directly help you with frequently asked questions about Map Prep Mobile. So that when you're on the Map Prep Mobile, even though there's these exact same pages on the university website, they're already there for you. So you have a question, don't even have to find the website. Just click right there. Um, the other thing, if you'll see in the lower right-hand corner, which I'm super excited about, um, they had this on MapPrint Mobile a couple years ago and then it was taken off for some glitches. We brought it back, fixed it up, and added a couple things. Um, so now you can choose between color or black and white on MapPrint Mobile. So you don't only have to print from color on a school computer. Also, if you'll see to the right of that, it's pages per side. So you can single side or double side, which I know is a big ask. Um, and then you can also do copies. So let's say you're trying to print out 10 things, um, 10 copies of something. Previously, you had to upload that exact same document 10 times. Not cool when it's 148 copies, right? You just change it, right? The other cool thing is you can do pages per page. So if it's a five-page document and you want to have two pages of that document, so it's like a reading article, you can print two pages of that document on the same page without even editing it. So um, this will go live tomorrow morning. So you guys have seen this for the very first time. But we're really hoping that this new map will be quite the treat and less tricky for students to work. <laughs> I love my fun, sorry. <laughs> um, but we stand for questions. The floor is open for questions. Senator Sajal. Yeah, just out of curiosity. What if I don't? Yes. Could you restate your question for the, uh, for the room? You couldn't hear yet. <clears throat> 
the speakers list is now open. I'm going to be limiting um, the speakers list to two speaking occasions for each senator, limited to three minutes for each speaking time. Does that make sense, everyone? Perfect. So, the speaker's list is now open, and President Cronin, I believe uh, you had a uh, moment. Yes, um, I'd like to make a motion to amend some of the wordage. If you see in the third whereas, where it says capped at 9.96 per semester, I motion to change that wordage to say not to exceed $10 per semester. I'd love to say. Second, uh, to amend the motion under the third whereas from capped at $9.96 per semester to not to exceed $10 per semester. Seconded by multiples. Is there any dissent to changing the verbiage there? Seeing none, the amendment will be so established. Remains open. Senator Zelmer. Okay. Hi guys. So um, the residential life brought up at RHA the what we were debating and how we want to um, bring it forward to just those votes. So just just so everyone's on the same page, we're just bringing this to a vote. We're not saying whether or not we want the sports level for sure. But we brought that up to RHA where there's a bunch of representatives. If you don't know what it is, a bunch of representatives from each floor of the res halls. And then so we explained everything to them. Fielded all their questions. If there was any frequently asked questions, we directed them to the correct location where they would find that, where we were directed to as well. And we had them vote on the end whether or not they would want this to go to the referendum, as you're sitting here. And in a vote of 46 to 1 to 4, there was an overwhelming majority that said they did want us to um, vote yes to send this to the most recent referendum. So considering that um, majority of the Red Hall's people, want us to move forward with this. Um, I think that should be taken into consideration because we actually have real numbers on how many students would want this to go into referendum. And if anyone else has any numbers, I think it'd be great to bring forward to see what our constituents are actually wanting. As far as uh, one thing we wanted to bring up uh, for attention is a statement here that was passed out at the beginning of the um, meeting from Senator Landis for your reference. Just wanted to mention that. The speaker's list remains open for any further senators who to speak to the motion. If we have no other senators wishing to speak on the motion, then I would accept a motion to proceed to a vote. So moved by President Cronin, is there a second? Is there any dissent to moving to vote on the motion? In that case, we will then uh, vote on the motion. So this requires a 60% uh, approval to pass. We will proceed in a vote by placard. So all senators who support Adopting motion 8601102418. Raise your placards now. Keep them high while we count. All opposed? Abstention. passes 16-0-12. No applause? <laughs> All right. That then uh, concludes all
old business. We will now move into announcements. President Cronin. Um, so now that uh, the referendum will be occurring because of student government's um, fourth wanting to put it forward, um, something I will suggest is that student government does take a stance on whether or not we support the um, approval or vote for students to vote yes or no in this. Um, so in the next coming weeks, if people are strongly opinionated, you can put forward a motion to do so. Um, and I would encourage everyone to take a stance on this because it would be a significant increase and to utilize your vote at this table to make the voice of your constituents heard. So. Any further announcements? Senator Cronk. So Brian just emailed me back. He said, no advertisement is planned for this new map for mo mobile rollout um, as it's somewhat kind of a test period. But he said, um, after a week and seeing if there's been any feedback, um, he's going to work on sending out some communication and talking with the community. So we've been having ongoing meetings with him. So we'll see you guys in touch on that. Senator Zelmer. Um, election day is next week, Tuesday. Please remind everyone you know to vote. Please get out and vote. No matter who you're voting for, please just vote. Senator Nguyenski. Going off of that, um, Karen Anderson is the community engagement office is organizing a uh, campaign for early voting in Lewis County. So tomorrow and Friday, she has, or her office has, if I look it up, um, I can share it on Google if they want to know about it, um, leaving from the student activities office to the courthouse if you bring of mail addressed to make your address in Mankato your ID and another registered voter to vouch for you, you can vote early tomorrow and Friday. Senator O'Cara. Constantine. I just wanted to mention uh, for those sports fans in the room, uh, we've got a pretty big football game this weekend at home. We haven't been home in two weeks. Um, Sioux Falls is a pretty good team. This win for us this weekend would be a good thing for us to go to related to maybe a higher ranking to make sure we get the number one seed for our region. So uh, come out and support your, your sports teams. Uh, I'm sure some of you might want to go to the hockey game on Saturday night. It's a pretty tough ticket to get since we're against the University of Minnesota. But if you haven't got one, you can find a friend that maybe has one to support them as well. And I will announce that the soccer team did win today in the first round of the conferences, uh, three to nothing this afternoon. So support the, uh, support your athletic uh, events. Okay, thanks. And coming from the soccer field with the 3-0 win and Bemidji's loss, we will now host the conference tournament on Saturday, Friday and Sunday. Senator Balami. John Bullcock. Thank you. Two quick things. I uh, want to thank you to those who participated and attended the UE conference last week. Um, it, was a, it was a good event uh, and, and very successful, so we look forward to continuing to host that again. The wrap-up meeting for that will be hosted Friday at 1, so uh, if Mimi hasn't heard about that, you were on the committee, so you should hear about that meeting. So, um, And then also, um, the election commission has been fully appointed. The election commission will be having its initial meeting tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, and so it is uh, our anticipation that the election rule for the 2019 election will be presented to this body uh, the week after Thanksgiving. So that will be available and ready to go by then. But tomorrow we'll be electing the election commission chairperson um, uh, and talking about the review of the rules um, so that that, that uh, can be ready for you. Um, for the information of this body, um, what process-wise what happens is the election commission will look at the election rules that have been set in the past. Um, they'll um, also look at the timeline, so filing deadlines, when stuff, uh, when the actual ele 
production will be and all that kind of stuff. And what they present to this group is actually a, um, it's a report, for lack of a better phrase, um, because the rules that they set um, are not subject to necessary approval by the Senate. Okay, so they've been appointed uh, to be an independent commission that will run the election process. So they'll set the rules, they'll present the rules to you. If you have thoughts about the election rules, you can provide that feedback. But once they present those rules that the commission approves, they're done, okay? And so that timeline will also be presented to this group, hopefully on uh, that last meeting of the semester, which I anticipate being the weekend of Thanksgiving. So that's what I have. President Cronin. Yes, um, so I completely forgot this. With the fact that now the referendum will be occurring, we do need to set a date for that. So just to, for some more information so that we people are aware of how this referendum will be um, made valid or not is, um, so the referendum needs to have at least half of the number of students who voted in the spring election vote in this one. So 2,155 students voted in the spring election, meaning that for this to be a valid uh, vote, 1,078 students will need to vote this upcoming referendum and 50% will have to vote either one way or the other for that to be um, the decision on the new fee. So with that, we do need to select a referendum date um, the, for the initiative and the policy is that it needs to have at least um, one business day for it to occur. So similarly to how the spring election is, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. is longer than the business day. Um, so on the um, calendar for days that would work, I personally think a Tuesday, that is typically the day that votes happen. So looking at the rest of the semester, the Tuesdays that would be um, able for that to be held with a good chance of student outcome, because on top of that too, we, the Elections Commission does need to host an open forum because it's a new fee. So we will have to have time to prepare for that. But in regards to Tuesdays, obviously November 6th is in like a week, that wouldn't work. Um, but November 13th, November 20th, 20th, probably not because that's two days before Thanksgiving and we don't have class this year on the Wednesday. November 27th or December 4th as December 11th is during finals week, which is also not a good idea. So that needs um, to be selected today. Is, does, if anyone has, um, an opinion on which of those three dates, as I said, November 13th, November 27th, or December 4th, that you think would be enough time for students to learn about the new fee referendum, as well as for us to open, host an open forum, um, and for students to make that decision. Please speak your opinion now. Yes. I would say either November 13th or November 27th, that way um, our constituents can get to know more about the bubble have uh, share it with their other fellow students and um, have other opinions on it. For formality's sake, I'm going to make this a uh, discussion item. So we're going to open a discussion on what day we want to set for the referendum. I have a Senator Arenas. I think the best date would probably be December 4th because that way they can also hold more than just one forum. wants to speak on the day that we should set the referendum for. Is there a motion for a uh, date which we will hold the referendum? Senator Zellmer. For which day? Oh, sorry, for the 4th. For December 4th. There is a motion to set the referendum date for December 4th. Is there a second? Seconded by multiple. All right. Uh, I'll just move straight to a vote on this. Uh, is all in favor of setting the referendum date for December 4th? All opposed? Abstentions? Excellent. The motion passes. The date for the referendum will be set for December 4th.
Now go back to announcements. Do you have any further announcements? Seeing none, I believe our uh, Dean of the Day couldn't be with us today. That was uh, Dean Morris, if I am correct. I heard that he was out sick. So, we miss you, Dean Morris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that concludes announcements. We will now proceed with roll call. Senator Thompson. Here. Senator Erickson. Here. Senator Moy. Here. Senator Ramsey. Here. Senator Schmidt. Senator Adediji. Senator Owusu. Here. Senator Andrade Lara. Here. Senator Kronk. Here. Senator Landis. <laughs> Senator Nowinski. Here. Senator O'Brighty. Here. Senator Silwall. Here. Senator Okaro. Senator Christensen. Here. Senator Akintan. Here. Senator Chaiti. Here. Senator Sajal. Here. Senator Balami. Here. Senator Garten. Here. Senator Sampson. Here. Senator Moe. Here. Senator Mitchell. Here. Senator Rye. Here. Senator Zelmer. Here. Senator Hoyset. Here. Senator Roba. Here. Senator Albright. Here. Senator Redinas. Here. President Cronin, Vice President Ogden Flamini. Have a good rest of your Halloween, everyone.